On today's episode of Semit the Builder, we finally start painting the floors. Yes, my friends, we are putting that paint in there with rollers and painting this side of the workshop. And then I will be primering this section and then I'll be doing a second coat here and then I'll be doing paint coat here and working our way all the way into this corner um, where there'll be a little bit of space for us to kind of put all this stuff. And then when this stuff is all dry, we'll move everything over here and do extra coats there and stuff like that. Um, so probably by the end of tomorrow, uh, actually probably the end of Monday, because tomorrow I've got to jump on a bullet train and head down south. Um, we should have the floors finished and done and just then we can start looking at what we're going to do with this wall and things like that. Actually, I have something kind of special planned with this wall. We'll see what's going to happen there. Um, but yeah. I'm excited. Also, we spoke to the landlord about all the holes and stuff in the walls. They were supposed to fix the holes, and I don't know, apparently the builder just thought the big ones, so he like only fixed that. There was one in that corner, and he fixed there, and never fixed like all the other damage. So we sent pictures to the owner, and he's decided to, to, to get all of them fixed, so they're going to meet us here next week and uh, probably fix them as well. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Here in Japan, normally the way that commercial leasing works is you kind of just get the building as is. Um, obviously though, we did say that we wanted the walls fixed to the owner and he agreed on that. So that's the only reason why he's fixing it. Normally here in Japan, it's just kind of, you get it as is. So if you wanted to like get a restaurant here in Japan, you would just get the restaurant, whoever previously used it, like an old restaurant, if there was like grease and dirty kitchen and all that kind of stuff, like you'd get it as is and it's up to you to clean it and do all that work. Commercial renting here in Japan is really, really weird. But anyways, that aside, enough talking. Let's start pouring paint and get right into it. Um, and uh, hopefully we have, get a good chunk of this done today and everything goes according to plan. Also, I got my camera back from Ebisu. So this is my secondary camera where I normally do my time lapses and slow-mo from. I accidentally left this out the front of Toge course. Um, so there was a few shots on my Toge video that I couldn't use because I accidentally left that there. It stayed there for 24 hours straight before I realized I left it there and it was still there. So uh, Japan for the win, guys. A thousand dollar camera and tripod were just sitting out the front of a track. Like people were drifting the next day and no one touched it. Japan is incredible. Anyways, let's get to painting. Today's video is sponsored by Dafsky. And if you don't know who or what Dafsky is, they are an online store that sells air fresheners for your car. They have the best quality and price starting at $2.99. So let's take a look at some of their products. Here are some of the air fresheners that Dafsky sent out to me. And as you can see, they have a massive range. And this is only just a little amount of what they have available. Um, I love that they have a huge variety and not only do they cater towards the JDM space of, every, of, of the car scene, but they also cater to other things like the UDSM space. So guys, head to dasky.com and grab yourself some air fresheners for your ride. Trust me, they smell great, they last long, and once again, best quality at their cheapest price of $2.99. So what are you waiting for? Once again, head to dapsky.com, grab yourself some air fresheners, support the companies that support me. I would not be able to be doing the things that I'm doing with the shop that I have now if it wasn't for companies like Dapsky. So thank you Dapsky, and let's get on with the video. I've already done some mixing on it, so she should be good. I mixed it for like a good minute before. Hurt my arm actually. Oof. Tight. There we go. Ooh, yeah. American gray. Hopefully, I don't make a mess of pouring this. 14 liters of American gray floor paint. Oh, that is thick. Now, it does say that um, if it's too thick, that you can just add 5% water to it. It says you shouldn't need it, but if it is a bit too thick for the concrete that you're putting it on, it says you can add like 5% water in the container. So we may need to do that, but we need to test first.
So a little bit of an update here. As you can see, we've done a little over half of this space now. We've got the first coat down. I gotta to try to remember, it's just the first coat, it doesn't need to be perfect. Cause like I keep seeing like little places, I'm like, oh, I wanna just like put it down thicker there. <laughs> but that's what the second and the third coats are for. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna do a little bit of this stuff with you guys watching. I know you guys were like kind of liking how you got to watch the roller last time, so. Get this thing all wet. Whoops, was pointing the camera at the wrong place. I'm gonna do it along this wall first. I'm gonna definitely need to get a brush to uh, touch up like all the edges around the wall. Trying to get as close as I can to that wall, but obviously there's still a bit of space there. And you can see like little pieces of concrete here where like I need to, where there's like holes, like little dimples, dimples or whatever they're called. I got to uh, go back over that and get a bit of paint in there. But yeah, is that kind of part done? Some more paint on this thing. It, I think um, we're definitely gonna need one more of these. Like I've already topped this thing up uh, once now. I could dilute it a bit, but I don't know. I think it'll be okay. It doesn't feel like it's too thick in my opinion. It feels like it's fine. So we'll just keep painting like this. Will you guys get it? Oh yeah. Something so satisfying about getting wet paint on. Can't really push too hard down with my left hand, but you guys get the gist of it. Anyways, I'm gonna put my ear pods in, jam out, get the rest of this done, and then we'll move on to primering that side. This half is now all done, and I'm getting the primer ready now to start doing this side. Man, we're getting so much done. Cannot wait to see the final product in the next few days. Um, this should be dry enough for me to walk on it and do a second coat by the time I finish primering this whole section. I'm pretty much going from just over this side of the heater all through here. So this whole section will be done and then all that will be left is here. I'm gonna try as well and just do a little bit through here of primer, whatever's left over as well. Just so like we only have this small section here that hasn't been done. And that way I can just like focus on getting more coats of paint done on this um, because we do have to still get a couple more, uh, like one more container of paint before we'll be able to do this section. We have enough paint for two coats, I think of here and here, maybe three coats, I think. Um, but yeah, for this section, we're definitely gonna need another tin. Anyways, let's get started. Set you guys back up on the time-lapse. We'll get the primer laid and then, uh, yeah. Coat number two on this thing. This is seriously the grossest stuff to deal with, but it's important so that the paint, it's kind of like concrete. It's like the same stuff I put in the concrete so it would stick to the older concrete. It's like a, kind of like a glue. Works really well. All right. Yeah, this is the grossest part. Ugh. Someone in the comment section was saying it's pretty much like watered down PVA glue. All right, well, that's enough for that. Start coating the floor. It is now time to start on the next coat on this side, and then we're gonna also get one coat done on there. I think it's probably gonna take me an hour or so to get that done, um, and I'm, I'm pretty confident we have enough paint. Yeah, we definitely got enough paint. We'll be fine. We only need probably one more of these for the, like this section and a couple more coats after that. Just mixing this bad girl up, and we'll get straight into it. 
I'm really enjoying this second coat because the paint goes on so much easier now that the surface has already got a, a coat of paint on it. So it's like, it's using less paint and it's so much easier to just apply. I don't have to put down anywhere near as much pressure as I needed, unless I need to like try and fill some holes. So you can see there like, it's a bit of a concrete hole there. So I put a bit of pressure there to squeeze some paint out. But uh, yeah, getting this second coat on here, going through it way faster than before. I think it's just because like, obviously when it's bare like that with just the primer, it's absorbing more paint and a lot harder to apply. And once there's already a coat of paint on it, it just slides and glides over it so much easier. The only time like I have to take my time is with these kind of trouble areas here and make sure we get the paint deepened in there. Yeah, just working at it, slowly but surely. Now finished with the second coat on this side and just started going around the edges to do the first coat on this freshly primed section. And then uh, once we've got this all done, I think we're gonna be able to do two coats on that and one single coat on still one whole can. So I think what's gonna happen is once we go to do like the third coat on this and the other two coats on this one, um, plus here, that's when we're gonna end up needing the extra can. Um, but we are gonna have paint left over, which will be good because if ever I like, you know, drop a rotor or like some heavy object, like for instance in the States, if you guys remember me dropping an alternator bracket on my iPhone and destroying it, but like if that falls on the ground and you take a chip out of it, super easy, just quickly clean it out and then just hit it with a paintbrush and some paint and it'll seal right back up. So that way we'll have some spare paint for like, you know, when those instances happen and we can just patch it right up. But this is starting to look so good. Camera, I don't think, does it justice. And this is the second coat. We've got one more coat to do after this, and we are done on this section. But yeah, it's really coming up super nice. I'm really happy with this. Cannot wait till this whole floor is done. It's gonna really transform this entire shop. Just finished putting down the first coat on this side. I couldn't paint through here because I ran out of the sealer through here and it was like uh, pretty pretty thin and sketchy in this section. So I didn't really put any paint down there just because I'd rather go over it again with the sealer when I get uh, back here tomorrow. No, sorry, the day after tomorrow. Um, but look how different this place looks now. It is so much better. It just and like even just just having the paint on the floor really gives you a perspective of how dirty the walls are here too It's crazy So good the two layers that are down on this side look really good um, When we get the third layer on that it's gonna look so Much better too. It just keeps getting better and better every layer I put down so I'm pretty hyped and then obviously uh this side will get its second layer. I'm gonna move everything into this corner as much as I can. Actually, I'm gonna try, oh, I can't walk on that yet. Um, I'm gonna try and get all these boxes because that's kind of trash and move that out and that'll give me some space there. I may be able to stack everything on that which then will give me the ability to get everything done on the next day that I've got to spend here. But uh, it's looking so good, guys. It's, <sighs> It's just one of those moments where you really like actually understand like just like your work's paying off you know what i mean you actually get to see the fruits of your labor i guess would be the right term like actually paying off it looks so much better can't wait to get the rest of the floors done and obviously what that means but man i'm so glad i ended up doing this myself definitely uh been fun and I've really enjoyed it actually. Just chilling and painting the floors, like listening to music in my own thoughts, thinking about new ideas and videos and stuff like that I wanna make. It's just, it's been fun. <sighs> Anyways, with that, I think it's time to pack up and bounce. So 
currently cruising home, jumping on the highway. And I figured it's been a while since I've let you guys listen to Gate on this thing. So let's hit it. Let's punch it. <laughs> oh, this thing just steps out the moment you put your foot down. I love it. Got home and just finished washing up. There was a lot of paint all over me and luckily it's water-based so it came off pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, that aside guys, I hope you're excited about the shop. I definitely am. We're at that stage now where pretty much anything that we do just looks like massive amounts of progress. Like just that, you know, we've obviously painted more than half of the shop floor now and just that like transformed how that entire shop looks everywhere like that we painted. It looks so much better. Um, but yeah, tomorrow uh, I have to go down south to Nagoya, um, not Nagano, but Nagoya, um, and we're going to be doing something cool there, so keep an eye out for that. I'll be taking the bullet train, the Shinkansen, uh, so that'll be a nice little change of not painting for a bit. Um, but by the end of next week, we should have all the floors painted, all the walls painted, and everything done. I also am going to let you guys know like how much I spent on all the paint and all that kind of stuff. So if ever you get a shop, you know kind of what to budget for this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that aside guys, smash that like button, write us a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you all in tomorrow's video. Peace out, Jamata.